you know what the Lord said to me one time? You have, the husbandman has to be partaker of his fruit. What you put out, you've got to eat. So I want you to know I haven't put a thing on you that I haven't had to eat myself. Don, really, oh, I used to roll it out by the yard. I loved it. And finally, God said, okay, now I'm going to give you time out to eat some of this. <laughs> that wasn't so good. <laughs> it was different, I'll tell you. <laughs> Easy to give it to you. But uh, I was never a person. I never wanted anybody to tell me something that they didn't do themselves. You know, I, I really do so I'll be honest with you, anything I tell you, I have done myself. I don't like, I never like for ministers to get up and tell me how badly I needed to pray because you know what I did? I watched to see what they were doing about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I never liked for anybody to tell me how to rear my children because I wanted to see what, how well they were doing at it before they told me how to do mine. So, what I tell others, I first demand of myself. Hallelujah. So this is the way it has to be. Because that they wouldn't even plant seeds until it was tested. That's the reason that Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it will abide alone. But if it falls into the ground and dies, it will bring forth a harvest. It will multiply itself. So you test seed. Even natural seed has to be tested before it's planted. You know how they test it? With sandpaper. They rub it with sandpaper. For unless the oxygen and the moisture can be uh, reach in through this outer shell and reach into where the life is in the seed so that it can germinate, it will do no good to plant it. And if sandpaper doesn't work, then they take a hot electric needle. Uh -huh. Did you ever had anybody that rubbed you the wrong way? That's the sandpaper. <laughs> but if the sandpaper doesn't work, he gets out the electric needle. And it gets a little better. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and so he, he, it's really interesting. I talked to, uh, I have a tape on the testing of the seed. It's quite interesting, really. So God always puts us to the test. You test materials before you put them on the market, don't you? But see whether or not they're going to stand up under washings and uh, all the wear. So my dear me, do you think if they test materials, they road test cars, they test metals, and all of this, do you think that God wouldn't test us? We're going to undergo it too. Before he puts us out there on the market, <laughs> in the marketplace. Took him, it's taken him 75 years to get me where I'm roadworthy. <laughs> so take courage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of them who come to me and say, I'm just dying to get out there. I said, well, don't. <laughs> don't go. Don't, don't die. <laughs> You'll get out there soon enough. And do you know what God is most interested in? Is your character, your spiritual character and development more than what you're going out there to do. He is. He's more interested in that part of you. So tonight we told you we were going to be talking to you about what? And I'm going to watch my time tonight. <laughs> uh, you get into these things and they get uh, pretty in-depth and sometimes I get lost in it. And I forget that time has passed away. <laughs> you forgive me, will you? And please don't hold it against me. So uh, tonight I want you to turn with me, please, if you will, to the 56th Psalm for a moment. 56th Psalm.
and the eighth and ninth verses. This is not my message, but this is just has so encouraged me that I wanted to read it tonight. Thou tellest my wandering, put thou my tears in thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? What book? The book of, in Malachi that he speaks about. They shall be mine when I come to make up my jewels. They who have spoke often of my name, they who have wept in my name, not your tears of uh, sorrow over some uh, something about self that was not granted you, and you were disillusioned and all, and you wept crocodile tears because you were disappointed. No, it is those tears that Jesus wept. You weep as the Spirit weeps. It's the Spirit that gives it. It's not those crocodile tears of self-pity. That doesn't work. And so you see, there is a soul that was a death. That doesn't do any good. That's what I tried to tell some of you last night. Don't sorrow unto death, but godly sorrow repentance. That's the good kind. Hallelujah. That's the kind that really will put you on top. Hallelujah. Ramasani. Glory Masanda here. You won't stand around feeling sorry for yourself and indulging in self pity. No godly sorrow gives you that ability to go over the top for Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh, Rust, I say, but there is a sorrow that works death. And that's no good. So don't do that. For he said, are they not in thy book? And let me tell you this, something that God showed us in our years of intercession, and we haven't quit. Don't misunderstand me. But he showed us this. That do you know that we are seeding the clouds by our prayers and our tears? And he said, the clouds are seeded by what you are sending up. And uh, when the prayer boils are filled in glory, he said they are like something, uh, a boil that sits, and the minute it gets full, it trumps. And it pours back on the earth that which you have seeded the clouds with. You are the one that brings forth the rain. It's your prayer. You get back in proportion to what you gave. He that spareth, you know, doesn't give much, won't get much. But he that does not spare, but gives lavishly, he will receive back in proportion to what he gave, be it prayers, money, time, whatever. So he taught us in those years how we were seeding the clouds. For you see, the principle of life in God is this. The sun is always drawing from the rivers and the uh, sea. It is drawing the vapor up into the clouds and it is storing them. And the minute the atmosphere is right, it pours it back on the earth. You get it back in rain. And the cold winds will drive the rains away. Do you know the Arctic regions have the least rain of all the earth? The Arctic. So the colder your atmosphere and the more pride there is among us, the inability to yield and move and work with the Holy Spirit, you become frigid. And God even showed me how you could be like a frigid woman. The moment that Jesus begins to draw nigh to you, you put him in arm's length and say, don't touch me. 
And he said, you become like a frigid woman. <laughs> and do you know that there are three zones in the natural world of temperatures? And he said, the church can be one of those different kinds. There is the torrid zone, there is the temperate zone, and there is the frigid zone. And he said, I said in the book of Revelation that I would that you were hot, either hot or frigid. So I'd know what to do with you. I'd rather you'd hate me than just to be lukewarm in the temperate zone. Neither hot nor cold. He would really rather we would hate him. It's true. He would. He said, I would that you were either hot or cold. Because he's going to have to put us in one category or the other. Where do you belong? Are you frigid toward God? Ever say a spirit feel a stoic? <laughs> Ooh, dear. <laughs> there's some of the worst times. So there are the there's the frigid, there's the temperate, and there's the uh torrid. The, what did I say? <laughs> I'm thinking on all that here in the spirit. Frigid, what? Uh temperate and uh torrid, yes, those three. I get to thinking off out ahead and I, I sometimes have to come back in like Brother Hagin says and hook up again to the natural. It's a little difficult sometimes. So this is what, um, I want to show you here the rest of this then. When I cry unto thee then because of what he's done in the eighth verse, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know. For God is for me. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. And I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. And that psalm has meant so much to me that I just love to read it over and over and over. I just love it because it has so much in it. I teach on it sometimes, but I'm not teaching on it tonight. Some of you tonight are going to have an open vision of the Master. You see the Biko Mahanda, you see when the this belongs to life and the Spirit. And he said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will show you things to come. So he's going to give some of you vision of things to come. Hallelujah. We're entering into that day when the need of this is very, very drastic. Hallelujah. Hasten my people, he said, Undo thy prayer closet. Hasten. I there will open the windows of heaven to you. Oh, it will not be the ordinary praying of the day. It's going to be the reality of the life that I am. It will be me pouring out my heart again in the midst of the years where I'm going to revive the work of my hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For if the Spirit would unveil to you tonight what you're on the brink of, you wouldn't hardly believe it. Don't do that. So I will handpick some of you. And I will visit you. 
I will show you things to come. Hallelujah. Can I hear? I must have watchmen stationed in vantage point. Hallelujah. In this hour. You will become true watchmen of God. Hallelujah. You will be very aware and very alert of the pro of Rosia, of the approach of alien entities. They will not even be able to come in your congregations anymore and sit undetected. Hallelujah. I'm so going to Goranisa tune and fine tune and Goranisa and Kravahastai of the Ramastai of my body. Hallelujah. For you see, I, Rodney, of the body of Christ, has with built in within it the power to cleanse itself. I'm going to rise up in the power of that agency which is within me, and I'm going to spew out everything that is not of my nature. Hallelujah. Ha ha! When you see this church rise to its power, ha ha, Roshaya, its potential, its excellency, and it's exhibit of the king of kings among them. The world will again say, truly, God is in their midst. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. Praise our God. Oh, so I want you to stand on tiptoe. <laughs> and eclipse thy with great expectancy. Hallelujah. Like a child looking in the window where great valuable jewels are displayed. Hallelujah. Okay. And God is saying tonight, I'm going to put on exhibition some of the things that I will for some of you to have. And tonight, if you will allow him, he's going to open your spiritual eyes and let you see what, it is, what is on exhibition here tonight. You will see it in the spirit. He has set up a table here. It is filled with gifts of God. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. the kings, they never came one to another to visit one another without exchange of gifts. Hallelujah. When the queen of Sheba came to see Solomon and she saw all that was there, she said, the hat has not even been told. Hallelujah. Rishta. <laughs> so he's going to be a so the king. I want you to see it tonight with your spiritual life. See this. It's here. And to those of you who have true value of the spirit life and being, he's going to say to you, I offer you some of this. As king. I want to fit you for the oncoming day. Hallelujah. And you must be fitted properly to enter into the king's court. Hallelujah. Your attire must be spotless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring Shepa here. Hmm. <laughs> Somebody has already seen some things. Ha <laughs> ha. Right now you've seen it. In the name of the Lord, you've seen it. And therefore, you will have it. Praise God. Praise God. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Ha. Ha. You may be seated now, if you'd like. Go ahead, sit down.
<laughs> Have you seen some of the things that he has up here? You know what some of them are? What are going to be the jewels in his crown? You know what they're going to be? They're not going to be rubies and diamonds. Those are cheap. He can create those with the words from his mouth. He can throw them with his fingertips, like he did his stuff. You know what the jewels of his kingdom are? So, men and women, hallelujah. So I want you to know that on this table tonight up here were some of the people, some of the jewels that belong in the master's crown, and they're there for you to take. You've been asking him. He's going to give them to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, ask largely that your joy might be full. He's thrilled when you have the faith to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless him. Hallelujah. Ooh, I tell you, I feel like I'm just walking on, I don't know what. <laughs> I hardly know what to do next. Ooh, bless God. Ooh. Praise God. Praise our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. preparing for your coming as you, he is preparing you for it. That's right. He did. Bless his name. Praise our God. Hallelujah. Ooh, well, I want to tell you, this is part of the atmosphere. <laughs> Do you know that if it were not for the atmosphere and the way it is constituted by God himself, you would never hear a sound in the natural universe nor in the spirit. You would not be able to hear a preacher preach. You would not be able to hear a choir sing. You would not be able to see fire burn. None of it. For do you know that it is the stirring of the atmosphere that God has constituted it, as, as he has constituted, that transmits sound to your ears. Though you had perfect ears, unless that atmosphere transmitted it to your ears, you could not hear. He also transmits the sight. Your eyes could not pick up one thing. You couldn't see a loved one. You couldn't see the beautiful terrain all around you. Unless the beautiful light of that light which he is in the atmosphere of God strikes your eye and enables you to see, you would never be able to see it. You'd be totally blind. It's the spirit that enables it. But where there is a transmitter, there must of necessity be a receiver. Hallelujah. <laughs> so it is not enough for God to transmit it. 
You must be on the receiving end, but the receiver must be as much in tune as the transmitter. So you say, I would love to see, I would love to hear. God said, my sheep know my voice, but that isn't all of it. We stop before God does. That's why we get into trouble. He said, my sheep know my voice, but those who know my voice do something. What do they do? Follow me. If you do not follow him, you do not hear his voice. So you see the atmosphere that God has constituted in the natural. Leave, transmit to our spirit the atmosphere, the life, the arena, the capability of hearing and seeing what's going on in that world which is invisible to our natural eye, but open to the eyes of our spirit. Praise God. You pick it up out of those uh, iramusti, out of that automusti, out of that atmosphere. You don't see it. Well, I'll get up here and we'll teach you some on this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, dear. I appreciate it. Praise God. <clears throat> because this is very, very important. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> I want to tell you tonight that one of the highest forms of expression that we use so much is this. The power of the Holy Spirit. We use it. In the sentence, in the Spirit, we use it. But I want you to know that everybody that has the Spirit isn't in the Spirit. Now, I want you to hear this. There's a bit. For I'll show you. I want to take you to some scripture and I'll show you how this works. Go to Revelations 1 and 10. The Holy Spirit as the Spirit of adoption is in every believer. But every believer isn't always in the Spirit. <laughs> do you know that you do not really hear until you move? It's like a mother says to a child, Son, get up. Go to the store for me. I want you to go get me a loaf of bread. Son does nothing. He just stays where he is. He does nothing. She keeps saying, son, I said to get up and go to the store for me. That boy doesn't hear until he carries out that word that mother has spoken. You haven't heard. You hear, Jesus said, but hearing, you have ears to hear, but you don't hear. Spiritually speaking. We can tune God out as well as in. And that's our problem today. So in Revelations 1 and 10, <clears throat> Here is John, the beloved disciple, who lived closer to Jesus than any other one of the disciples. He leaned on his bosom. He felt the very heartbeat of God. Hallelujah. It's a coveted place. But you can have it if you want. And he said, I was in the Spirit. On the Lord's day. Many come on the Lord's day, but they're not in the Spirit. Not alone. 
I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And when you're in the Spirit, you're going to hear something and you're going to see something. And he said, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Hallelujah. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What you see right now, praise you God, in a book, and I want you to know that what he saw when he was in the spirit, because when he heard the voice, he turned to see, to hear. And unless God gets your attention, if he had never gotten Moses' attention when he spoke out of the burning bush, he would never have heard what God was going to say to him. But he turned, Moses turned to see this sight. And the moment he turned and God got his attention, he spoke. Hallelujah. Some of us today are moving so fast in the natural <laughs> that we can't hear what the Spirit is saying. We don't turn aside to see. And they hear. So because we have the spirit of adoption that says we are born into the kingdom of God, you see, you can be in the water, but the water doesn't get in you. You're going to be standing right in it, but it doesn't get in you. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I want then to go with me, if you please, will, to Second uh, Corinthians. And I'm going to hurry here because it's 9.20 now, and I'm not going to keep you long. 2 Corinthians 12, 2. I'm just going to cite some things to you and let you, many of you pastors, you, give you some material to work on. <laughs> Let's see, I want 2 Corinthians yes, 12. I'll begin with the first verse. It is not expedient, that means it isn't necessary, for me to, for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man, not just a man. That isn't, that doesn't mean a thing. I knew a man in Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> About, above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body. I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one was caught up to the third heaven. Hallelujah. And I knew such a man. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. <laughs> How that he was caught up into paradise. Oh, my dear, you see the, the wording that the Spirit uses in the Bible because of our finite and our limited of, of knowledge and capabilities of uh, knowing about spiritual things. God is so limited in being able to get it across to us. So he uses animals. He uses all kinds of things in nature. To the undamate, the known, the teachers about the unknown, as near as he can get to us in our finite state. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and so he said, this word paradise, my dear, does it ring a bell? You know, I hear people, they talk about going to Hawaii. They talk about going to uh, uh, Bermuda. They talk about going to many, many of the islands of the sea, the Isle of Capri, and this and that and the other. I haven't been to some of them. But they talk about, they said, oh, it was paradise, baloney. <laughs> That's as near as we can come to it, maybe, tonight, down here. But not at all. I want to tell you 
that if you could be suddenly taken in to the heavenly city, <laughs> the Rishon of Mahana, Paul said, I saw things that isn't even lawful for me to utter on earth. They're so marvelous. They were so outstanding. They were so beyond anything that human nature or human mind could even begin to know or believe. Then he said, it's unlawful for me to even even talk about it. Because he was a man in Christ. He lived this. He moved in that realm. You see, we're to move in the spirit like a fish moves in that water. He is just as much at home in that habitat as he would, and you take him out of that and he will die. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you see, we're to move in that realm of life which is spirit nature. And we should become as much at home in that and more so than we are in this earth life. I, that's the reason it's so hard for me to talk sometimes. <laughs> I talk so much in the spirit and it, I, it's become even more natural to me in a way than my own language. And I have to watch myself. I'm liable to talk to somebody out there in the, in the spirit. <laughs> I'm liable to just Start talking to the spirit here. Wouldn't hurt him. Oh, and I'll give you a little in. <laughs> I'm to help them. Oh, they like brazen things today, so why not shock them good? <laughs> That's right. I, I love to do a little of it. You know, I just love sometimes I go into places and they have bars. And bless their hearts, they're all sitting around in the stupid in the dark. And thank brother how I'd love to go in there and set a glory bomb off. <laughs> I would. I'd love to go in there and sing them one of the songs of Zion. <laughs> and you know what would happen to them? A lot of them would love it. They'd love it. I was in the one of the clubs in Tulsa. And uh, one of our better clubs called the Summit Club one night. And one of, and the man who was playing the piano, who was the uh, pianist for the evening that did the music up there, happened to uh, be playing something. And he had been a preacher at one time, was no longer in the ministry, and was spiritual. And I said, is that for me? What are you doing here? You're going to play up there in the club. And all of a sudden, he said to me, do you sing? And I said, oh, yes, I sing. I sing the songs of Zion. He said, would you sing if I would play something? And my husband looked at me, and he said, no. <laughs> he answered, boy. <laughs> and, I, and he just kept on. He said, come on, what do you do? And I said, well, uh, I don't know any of your songs of the day. I only know spirits. Well, he said, I can play some of them. What do you know? <laughs> so I told him a few, and so he said, okay. So he said, I went over to the piano, and he began to play it. And do you know, when I finished, those people began to play. And there were some senators there, uh, some from uh, our state uh, capital. And they begged me to come back and sing for them again. Their hearts are hungry. Did you know that? And the Baker D came to me, and he said, I have never heard such music since I heard it in the cathedral in Lula. He was a pastor. And he said, it's marvelous. It's beautiful. Sing us another song. Do you know that even emperors Beg to hear the people of Zion sing. They said, sing us one of the beautiful songs. They had a reputation that spread all over the Roman Empire. And emperors clasped it, one of the greatest gifts that could be given to them, to have the children of Zion sing the song of the Lord. There was a beauty in that song. That their emptiness of their life, it did something to it. It spoke to a chord within them. 
And so you see, when we are men and women moving, moving, having our being and moving in that realm of life which he is, like fish moving in water. And it is said that if you would even take a fish out of the Pacific and transport it to the Atlantic, suddenly it would die. So, Marikina Moyakamasia, God is wanting to get us acclimated to the spiritual climate of God. He said, you're in the world, but you're not of it. You see, we're living a spiritual life in a material, natural world. Hallelujah. And the natural world cannot sustain us. It can't sustain this life that we have in Christ. So we must be alamate. We must daily be gorita, draw in out of that atmosphere like you have to partake of the natural atmosphere which is all around you. You can't see air, you can't smell it, but you sure do have to breathe it. Till it. And so if you think that you can have, just have the be entrance into the kingdom by reason of spiritual adoption and do not maintain this life which God has given you by breathing in constantly of that atmosphere which he is, which surrounds us. You see, Berenica, air and atmosphere is to the lungs what prayer is to the spirit. It's by prayer that you may not be, you draw out of that atmosphere of God, that life which He is. And you, Granadista, you continually have to fill yourself with this life. It's like a child. If it's born, and you say, Please, God, we have a baby. And you walk out and shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> you go back in in a few days to see what happens. That life will have expired. Life that is birthed must be maintained by the same spirit that births it every day. Hallelujah. So he said, I knew a man in Christ. Oh, Lord! Hallelujah. And it was caught up in the paradise. And that again, like I say, was the nearest God could come to tell us of the beauty, the majesty, the fulfillment of dreams. You say they say that life is like a concert, that we practice to Rikia, to Gramasia, to give it. But just as we reach the state where we have become eligible for the Veronica, Jeremashtai, to play the part. We go. We move off of the stage of this scene. But remember, the music goes on. You only learn here and have the instrument tuned. And he's Garanita and he of Ramashaya, he's preparing you for the greatest oratorio of the ages. Oh, <laughs> oh Risha. Praise our God. And so you see, because we do not maintain this beautiful life within us which he has given, it is never promised to you. You see, the priest had to live from off of the altar. That's where he got his food. Go back in your old New Testament, Old Testament priesthood, and the priest had to live from off of the altar. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to quit. I'm just going to give you the highlights of this. The, abs the ab atmosphere sustains this life. You cannot live without it. You cease to breathe, and I often tell them, you cease to take in and breathe in and draw out of this life which Christ is. You see, you must feed the Christ life within you. It's like a child within the mother's womb. That child feeds 
from what the mother feeds on. So you must feed Christ, and Christ will not feed on anything but clean grain. He is like the dove. The dove will not feed on anything but clean grain. Christ will not feed on this. Christ within me, and Paul even said, I travail in prayer again and child Arista until Christ be fully formed in you. He's growing within you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and do you know that the babe in the prenatal stage in the womb of the mother is hanging in a bag of water in darkness, all cramped up like this? You know the natal for prenatal position? And if you're an eagle, if you could get and you could, this babe could hear, but it can't. And if it could see, but it can't. And if you run here and you could say, you will soon be moving out of here into a world of sights and sounds and movement. Hallelujah, that is in unbelievable. That they wouldn't believe you. <laughs> and it's just as difficult to tell you who are creatures of earth, finite, Veronica, Veronica, that you're soon, that Cornelia, going to move out into a life that Veronica, that is beyond anything that you can ever think or imagine. Veronica, but the Spirit is trying to reveal it to us now, to get us to become a partaker of it, to walk and live and move in it. So that Naranita, so that we will not be Saranita, we will be able to reign with him in power and glory. You're going to be fitted with to reign and with him. Hallelujah. So I want you to know, <laughs> oh my dear, oh, there's so many things I'd like to get to, but I can't. So, <laughs> we'll pass on here. Mm. I want you to know that if it were not for the atmosphere around you, even in the natural, you would be totally destroyed. It is atmosphere that protects you. For the meteors that are out there, that glow will shoot through the heavenly. If they did not strike the atmosphere and be broken up, they, and they would come through. They would totally annihilate us. But God has so constituted the atmosphere that when those meteors strike it, they break it up. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we only get a little of the fallout. So it is with the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Here in here, he so surrounds his people. He said, I'll be a wall of fire about them. So that the dear son of Mahaya, the enemy won't be able to come in. He protects us. He's so constant the atmosphere of God in the spirit that surrounds us. It's so powerful. Hallelujah. The temple had within it a guard that was set up on such a marvelous scale that no alien force or entity could get through that guard system. <laughs> it guarded the Shekinah where the glory of God dwelt. I want you to know that God is going to guard that hill. He's very zealous over his name, his glory, his majesty, and he does not want it desecrated. So the Bible says that if we walk in the Spirit, we'll be so protected from the lusts of the flesh that it will be no problem, whatever. None. Go, and if you want to know the works of the flesh, how they're categorized, I want you to know that some of them are definite affronts and offenses to the living God. You want to know what they are? I'll tell you. Here are the ones that are the sins against God that are a total affront and
an offense to his divine nature and character. Here they are. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. What is, you know what that is? <laughs> Idolatry and witchcraft. Do you know God told me the, one time, he said, do you know why homosexuality is wrong, basically? Do you know why it is? While it is a sin against your own body, of course, and it's even against nature. But he went on to tell me that there's one basic reason that is the most deadly of all. He said it brings death, not life. He said, this is Satan's prime trick in the end time to try to thwart the plan of God and keep sons and daughters from being born. His prime trick. He likes to annihilate the human race. And he hasn't been doing it. He's worse than fair had ever hoped to be when he destroyed the babies in the time of Christ, thinking he'd get the Christ. So Nanisa. And so, you see, he's still at it. And any of you who are guilty of this tonight, it's the greatest affront against Almighty God Himself. That's the first and prime reason of all. And it brings death to a nation, to a race, to a people. And it'll bring finally death to the human body. I heard a man who is a victim of age himself was on the other night. And he told that 36 of his buddies had died in three months. And he himself is looking forward to nothing but death. <laughs> then the others are sins against our fellow men. As expressed in malice and social disorders. And I'm not going to list all those. And then the others are sins of personal excess. You want to know what they are? Revelings. <laughs> oh, my dear. How we love it. And a lot of other things, and I'm not going into that. I've got all kinds of things here. <laughs> oh, and I want you to know that if uh, it is because of the transmission of sound that your prayers are heard of, by the, because of the constitution of the atmosphere. And unless you're praying in the Spirit according to Jude and uh, according to Corinthians, you are not heard. Spirit can only pick up out of its own realm. Your prayers are useless, say, if they're not in the Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't work up a fever. <laughs> So you see, it's because of the atmosphere of life which God is that he picks up the prayer in the Spirit and relays it directly to the throne of God. They're there. You go through. God showed me how this worked one time. You remember when uh, President uh, Carter opened the White House phone for people from everywhere to call in? Well, I want to tell you, he said uh, they got thousands upon thousands of people who tried, but only 125 got through. He said, that's the way it is with my people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you see, prayer to be received and transmitted into the realm of glory. They must be in the spirit. Hmm, let's see, the atmosphere, I wanted to show you how the atmosphere reflects. Do you know that light serves two purposes? It serves a purpose for you to see, but also for you to be seen. And what men see and what they should see, when they see you, they should see a reflection of the Master. They should see you. For the moon is
is a type of the church and the sun a type of Christ. And when the earth is turned on from the moon, she grows cold and dark. She receives no warmth. And when the church does not turn her face toward the sun in prayer and in the power of the word, she goes cold and dark. Hallelujah. Her heart becomes indifferent and careless. But the moment she turns back to the sun, she has no light in herself. The moon is a dead body. Hallelujah. But she receives her light from the sun. And when you about the near, that's the reason they said of the early disciples, they took note of those men that they'd been with Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'd like to go into that quite a bit in depth, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just citing you these in passage. <clears throat> Oh, let's see. <laughs> the atmosphere also reveals there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed sooner or later. So the atmosphere. And do you know that if it were not for the pressure of the atmosphere, we would not be able to walk uprightly? We would just be flying off out into space, but because God has so constituted the atmosphere that it, it brings a pressure upon human beings so that we can walk uprightly, do you know that it is the pressure of the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that keeps you walking straight and uprightly? And if you did not have this pressure, and you want me to tell you how to get pressure, on sinners in your service, the more full of the Spirit the members of the congregation are, then they come together. It's like all the tributaries, you're like little tributaries, all of you coming in and contributing to the mainstream, and it begins to rise in power, hallelujah, and move with force. And when you all come in and you really were all full of the Spirit like you ought to be, you would be contributaries to this mainstream of power and they would be under such conviction they couldn't stand it until they surrendered. That's how you get it on them. <laughs> it doesn't just hit them because they come in this building. This building doesn't have a thing the pressure and the conviction comes when the saints come together in power in the fullness of the spirit. <laughs> That's the reason your services get the dead and dull and dry and half of them get tired of them themselves and I don't blame you. I would be. <laughs> oh dear. By means of the atmosphere, I wanted to tell you what many, many of the men of God in Christ saw. They saw into the heavens. It was no strange thing to them. They knew about it. So, I, oh, I'm going to close with this. The atmosphere revives. <laughs> it will revive you. In the midst of the year. And that's the reason God has set this, the people in these latter days to praying again. For every time God is getting ready to do a great thing in the world and in the church, he sets the prayer power in motion. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's it. So that's why you're going to see in these last days this great move of God. Because God is honor bound to come where prayer is really in the spirit. He is gone there. He can't miss it. He said, can I withhold from Abraham my servant the thing I'm about to do? No, he couldn't hide it from Abraham. Abraham would find out what he was doing because he was a man of the spirit. He couldn't hide things from Abraham. He'd get, he'd find out every time. 
It's like your children when you have Christmas and you uh, get them something and you're trying to keep it from them and they'll walk up to you and they'll say, I know what you got me. <laughs> I know what it is. That's the way with the true servant of the Lord who is a man in Christ in the Spirit. You can't hide it from him. He'll know. That's the reason the church is going to have to know where we are and have understanding of the times and know what you ought to do. God love you tonight. We love our Basanda Kania. Is there anyone here that is not filled with the filled with the Spirit tonight? Let me see your hand. I only want those who are not filled with the Spirit. Let me see your hand. Anyone here? Not filled with the Spirit? Huh? I know there is. <laughs> Come on. I want you. If you aren't full of the Spirit, I want you to come tonight. Anyone here? Hmm? Anyone? Okay. It's always like it always is. When one person comes, then all the rest rush up here. <laughs> so we're, we're not going to beg you tonight. We have told you that what it is going to take. You cannot live this in the flesh. You never could. You never will. Man does not have it in himself. It's only in Christ, and you only maintain this life in Christ by the power of prayer where you draw out of that life and that atmosphere which he is, and you maintain this spiritual life within you. Hallelujah. God in his grace and his mercy has given us all the things that we need for godliness in this life. In Peter he tells us, He's provided everything that is needed to live a godly life. So we're there in the, in the mighty name of Jesus. So tonight, I'm not going to do a prolonged number on you. We're just going to stand right now. Come on, we're going to stand. Hallelujah. Jesus. We ask you again and we thank you because eyes have been opened here tonight. Blind eyes are seeing. They have been, they've had blind spots in areas. But you're removing those blind spots tonight. And they're going to see. They're going to begin to have communion and fellowship again with you. Hallelujah. And it's going to be a time of great joy and pleasure. It will not be a chore. In the mighty name of Jesus. The fellowship with love is no chore. It's a divine pleasure. And so tonight, Father, we just extend our hands to these people tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, you said if we went into a place and they received us, we could leave a blessing behind upon them. And Father, they have received us. And so in the mighty name of Jesus, we are bestowing upon this people tonight a beautiful blessing of the Heavenly Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> God love you all. You know, you don't have to make an altar call every night. Did you know that? People even get jaded with that. They do. They get jaded with that. So I just want to leave with you the beautiful sense of Jesus and how he loves. Draw near to me. He said, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. Don't be frigid for me. 